Yes, this year's AACR is uh, an extraordinary meeting. It's clearly the best one yet. And at this meeting, um, there are uh, very seminal advances in genomics, in epigenomics, and especially in the immunotherapy of cancer. Um, the uh, plenary session uh, really talks about how these advances are now being translated to patients with cancers of all kinds. I specialize on a cancer called multiple myeloma, and we will have a session here which will talk about the uh, science and genomics, epigenomics, and multiple myeloma, and the immunotherapeutic approaches in multiple myeloma that have and will translate to the initial management of this disease, the management of relapse disease, and also in the future targeted therapies. Well, I think the history of treatment of myeloma has been very remarkable in the last 10 to 15 years. We have 16 new approved, uh, FDA approved therapies in the last dozen years, and we had seven new approved therapies in 2015 alone. As a consequence, as a direct consequence of these advances, there has been a three to four fold increase in the survival of patients with myeloma. Now, on the level of the genomics uh, of myeloma in terms of profiling and understanding the disease, prognosis and potential therapies. It's a very genetically complex disease. There are many abnormalities, uh, thousands of mutations at presentation. There's underlying genomic instability that ultimately leads to drug resistance and relapse. Nonetheless, there are attempts now to identify those pathways that are essential for growth, survival, and drug resistance and to target them with combination of targeted therapies. On the genomic side, there's also the uh, real possibility of targeting the consequences of this genomic instability. So for example, cells that are multiplying very fast because they have amplification of the MYC oncogene have high levels of replicative stress and it's now possible to block that stress response and induce those cells into apoptosis. In a similar way, cells that have ongoing DNA damage should die given the genetic instability and damage, but we and others are now strategizing on how to turn on the natural death pathways in these cells with all of the DNA damage uh, so that they can, in fact, die as they should. In the area of immune therapies, that's particularly exciting because the immune system is potent, it is adaptable, and it is selective. And it, in my view, is the most likely way that we will be able to overcome the continued different strategies that myeloma cells do to resist our therapy. And in myeloma, there are many members of what I call the immune team. There are the immunomodulatory drugs, lenalidomide, thalidomide, pomalidomide, that upregulate the immune system. There are monoclonal antibodies that bind elituzumab and daratumumab and mediate ADCC, CDC, and block agonistic or trigger death pathways. Those two first two members of the team, the immunomodulatory drugs, are now being used with antibodies to enhance their activity, and that is how elituzumab was FDA approved together with lenalidomide. The third member of the immune team in myeloma is the checkpoint inhibitors, and the interest there is that PD-L1 is expressed not only on the myeloma tumor cell and PD-1 on the immune effector NKT and NKT cells, but PDL1 is also expressed on accessory cells, the myeloid derived suppressor cells and plasma cytoid dendritic cells that promote tumor cell growth, survival, and drug resistance and further inhibit the immune system. So, checkpoint blockade with PDL1 should not only release the break on the immune effector cells, but also block these accessory cells phenotype. 
in addition to these three members, the immunomodulatory drugs, the antibodies, and the checkpoint inhibitors, there are uh, two other members, actually three other members of the immune team, uh, histone deacetylase inhibitors, in particular the HDAC6 selective HDAC inhibitors, have the ability as single agents to stimulate in patients autologous immune response against their myeloma, but they can also be combined with the immunomodulatory drugs or the antibodies. And interestingly, they can shift the uh, immune response towards a memory phenotype. For that reason, vaccines, which are the next member of the immune team, have now been re-explored in myeloma. We can vaccinate with a peptide-based vaccine, for example, and get an immune response. And we can amplify that response with the addition of lenalidomide. We're now testing whether a checkpoint inhibitor, anti pdl one or the HDAC inhibitor can not only amplify this response, but switch it to a memory phenotype. And long-term memory uh, immunity in patients against their own myeloma, especially if we can achieve this early on, is a really a major advance. And finally, we have cellular therapies that are part of our immune team. Uh, and that would be CAR T cells, for example, which, as you know, the T cells are harvested from patients, transfected, so that they react against a particular target. The most promising target in myeloma is BCMA or B cell maturation antigen. Those cells are expanded and then transfused back to patients as their own immune army. So featured here in the myeloma session will be combinations of these immune team members to achieve a selective response and to amplify it. And just to summarize, we're particularly excited given the genetic heterogeneity, ongoing DNA damage, that a combination immune approach may just be selective, potent, and adaptable enough to overcome uh, any mechanisms of drug resistance.